we are most likely seeing the worst recession since the Great Depression of the 1930s, but the stock market rebounded about 35% since hitting a four-year low in March. What are the reasons behind this and what can we expect in the near future? Thank you for stopping by, and stay tuned, because this video will cover a lot of useful data, reasons and expectations during this health and financial crisis. Make sure to subscribe to support the channel and hit the like button, it really helps out my channel. Without any further ado, let's jump into the video. In the first part we'll go through some recent data. In the second part we'll explore the reasons why the gap between the stock market and the economy is widening and what we can expect from this. The unemployment rate is at the highest level since the Great Depression and businesses are closing down at an unprecedented pace. Basically one of four employees filed for unemployment. Thousands of companies are expected to go out of business soon and the death toll keeps rising. Governments have taken out trillions of dollars worth of debt in the last three to four months. This fact brings with it two consequences. First of all, debt provides some stimulus for the markets and the economy as a whole which could last up to a year, so it is nevertheless temporary. Second, this huge amount of debt will have to be paid back and this will have to happen in the form of tax revenue, that is with taxpayers' money. The problem is that this debt is being taken out in a very short period of time at a pace that is about 10 times higher than usual and paying back debt will mean more financial burden especially for the next generation, our kids and probably grandchildren as well. Now add to this the fact that people and businesses are also taking out debt. Household debt, for example, is breaking record highs in the US. Credit card debt is also a great issue, as more and more people accumulate debt in about one of four state that this is a consequence of the pandemic and lockdowns. When it comes to millennials, one out of three are in this situation. This could have its fingerprints so to say on the economy for decades to come. In order to prevent an economic collapse of great proportions central banks stepped in by injecting more liquidity, that is trillions of dollars into the economy. Central banks basically gave out loans to businesses, banks and individuals in the form of stimulus. If the Federal Reserve had not taken these steps, the market would have pretty much collapsed by now. Given all of these hurtful statistics regarding the economy and the accumulation of debt, the stock market has actually risen by about 35% since March 23rd. How is this possible? Well, it mostly comes down to investor expectations for an economic recovery, that could happen as states start reopening their economies. Add to that the fact that the Federal Reserve has injected trillions of dollars into the economy to avoid an economic crash. This basically reassured investors, that banks and businesses will have access to credit and cash during this health and financial crisis. Nevertheless, by cutting interest rates, the central bank encourages companies and consumers to borrow more money. That's easy to understand, if you can get money at low interest rates, you will have more money to spend. If people spend money, businesses can up their production, will have more income and can hire more people to further develop their companies. Also, Investors are putting faith in a vaccine and news of potential treatment by the end of the year or early 2021 also helped to raise the equity markets higher. Another reason for the stock market growth is that some investors rather take on risk. Though investors took out more than $325 billion in investments from mutual funds and exchange traded funds, or ETFs, now they are putting in more money, though that means great risks given the fact that volatility is still king on the stock market. Another factor to take into consideration is that many of the largest public companies in the world have actually made great profit during the last several months. Not to mention the fact that Amazon, Apple, Google or Facebook are likely to become more dominant after this crisis. Amazon, the third largest public company in the world grew by more than 15% in revenue in the last quarter. Apple, Facebook, Google and Microsoft also saw increased revenues. These five companies compose almost 20% of the S&P 500 and when they perform well, that is also reflected on the market. Small businesses, however, which are basically the pillars of the economy were hardest hit. There are more than 20 million small businesses in the US, most of which are struggling, many closed down and had to fire or furlough employees. It is worth mentioning that these businesses are not represented in major stock indexes like the Dow and the S&P 500. So while the economy is falling the stock market can still keep going on an upward trend. If we were to include here the 401ks and individual retirement accounts, about 55% of Americans are investors, down by about 7% since the early 2000s. Also, the wealthiest 10% of Americans own almost 85% of the total stock held by US households. Given this crisis, we will likely see fewer people having money to invest in the rich becoming even richer. Some experts warn, 
though, that the stock market is overpriced or overvalued at this point. There is also a chance that if the economic recovery is going to be slow, stock prices will fall again. Because investors' expectations will not be met. I think it is safe to say, that besides being careful when investing, we should also look beyond the optimism of the stock market rally. If you are a business owner, I think it is more important to look at your own growth potential, also, at how suppliers are doing and how customers behave. These could be more valuable indicators than the stock market at this point. In the end, this crisis might have taught us a valuable lesson as well, the stock market should not always be viewed as an indicator of economic prosperity. Thank you again for watching, share this video with a friend, and please don't forget to subscribe.